No matter what happened before you came in, take a number and relax. Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group. This is the last part of our five-part series, Waiting on the Lord in the Book of Psalms. We finish up today with the call to wait. Yes, if you're a believer, if you're a Christian, what you are committing to do is to wait on Jesus. You're committing to wait on the Lord. So now that we know that we've been called to wait, what if we were able to wait and relax? You know, when you go to take a number and you take the number and let's say the board says number 15 is up and you got a ticket that says number 82. Oh, that's a long wait. Well, we can wait and we can relax. That's what we're going to talk about in the study today. But before we get into that, thank you again for watching, especially if you've been with us with the whole series. Praise God. Pass it on to someone else. Please share this video. Like the video so others can find it. We appreciate your comments. If there are any questions that you have, drop those down below in the comments wherever you're watching this. And please visit us online at the website, changeministry.org. And you can sign up to get on our email list or to get on our text list, whichever you prefer, so we can stay in touch that way as well. No matter what happened before you came in, the idea of when we walk with the Lord, when we come into relationship with him, we're always growing. But let's say we're coming into a new place, a new space with God, whether you're like fresh into your walk or the Lord's called you up and you've trusted him and he's, he's leading you forward. Don't bring in whatever has happened in the past. And that's important because mentally, psychologically, that can have an impact on our waiting because we're still thinking about before we came in. So when we come into a walk with God, when you're coming into your relationship, the psalmist is going to show us, you know what? Leave that behind. Come on in here and relax. For example, in Psalm 39, verse six to seven, surely every man walketh in a vain show. Surely they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches and he knoweth not who shall gather them. And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. In this particular context, it's talking about riches and money where the vain man is, is, is putting his life and he's, he's putting his hope on what he has. Well, the psalmist is saying, well, leave that behind. Leave it behind and your hope now is in who you're waiting on and not on what you have. This is so vital because I know a lot of sincere believers who are putting their faith on the future based on what they can do or based on what they have. But we've got to understand that the Bible is prophesied. Whatever we have will be taken from us. And whatever we could do, we won't be able to actually do. We will have to have a dependence on God and a waiting on God that transcends the anxiety of the wait. A patience that's stronger than panic. And the psalmist and the word of God is trying to teach us this. So money, forget about it. Drop that, take a number and relax because now your resources are going to be provided by the Most High God. Over here in Psalm 69, verses five to six. Oh God, thou knowest my foolishness and my sins are not hid from thee. Let not them that wait on thee, O Lord of God, host be ashamed for my sake. Let not those that seek thee be confounded for my sake, O God of Israel. It's almost like the psalmist is saying, I don't want people to get mad at me because you didn't come through like I told them to. <laughs> and I know that's happened even in ministry. You're trying to encourage someone and you're saying, Lord, I'm telling them to go left. I'm telling them to, to go right or whatever. And I would hate for when they make that turn, if this happens, then they come blaming me. Well, that's a really sincere prayer request. Lord, I don't want to let them down. And guess what? God never lets anybody down. Remember, he can do anything but fail. And he's not going to fail you even for David's sake or any of the other psalmists here in the book of Psalms. God's got a promise to keep for David, so he's not going to let you down, brother. He's not going to let you down, sister. We can count on God's word because I can't find a verse in other Psalms or in the writings of David or even in the life of David where David said, oh yeah, he let me down that time. Now he already confessed his own foolishness, his own sins. If anybody got the blame game, it was David, but I never see David calling out God. I never see David saying, yeah, he did not come through. So if David can't say it, why are we thinking it? If David never preached it, why are we prophesying it by being afraid of our futures? Don't do it. Let God do it. So by the time you get to Psalm 40 verses one to two, wrapping this thing up, no matter what happened before you came in, take a number and relax because to the chief musician, a Psalm of David, David says, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. 
Did you see the language here? He said he inclined and he heard. He did not just turn his chair to me. He leaned into me and listen. God hears our prayers. God knows your fears. He knows our anxieties. He knows our stress. Oh, the silent killer, the cortisol levels. We got to bring them down with Christ's righteousness. We got to bring them down with the word of God. We got to get our blood pressures down, not just by the foods that we don't eat, but by the faith that we do feed. And it's fed by the word of God and it is strengthened by remembering what he has done. The word and the works of God hand in hand. This is what we're supposed to be feeding our faith on and not our fear on. And I pray that this series has helped us to recognize that no matter where we were before we came to God, forget about it. Because if you confess it to Christ, he's forgotten about it and he's forgotten about our sins. And guess what he can do with all that mental space? Focus on you. He can focus on your family. He can focus on your situation. And like David said, he cannot just turn the chair to you. He can lean in and listen. And God hears, but he does not just hear. He helps. I'm so glad that God's a hearer. He's a helper and he's a healer. So no matter what happened before you came to him, take a number. Take Jesus. If you're taking Jesus as your righteousness, you can relax to trust the God. Who's, for, who's forgiven your past to be the God who is faithful in your future.